Hey what's up guys, it's Vakozi back at it again with another Honkai Star Rail video. Today we are going to dive into the nitty gritty of effect hit rate and debuffs. Ever wondered why it's crucial for a variety of units even when they are not specialized in damage over time? Well stick around because now with the release of one of the best damage over time units it is more important than it has ever been. We will break down why characters like Black Swan, Green Knife and Silver Wolf or even Peeler absolutely need effect hit rate. First things first, let us lay some groundwork. Any debuff inflicted on your opponent, whether it is a damage over time, defense shred or freeze debuff, falls under the debuff category. Some deal damage like wind shear, bleed or burn, while others alter your opponent's status such as freeze. You have characters like Black Swan who deals wind shear damage or characters like Silver Wolf who applies debuff that will reduce your enemy's defense, their speed as well as their attack. They all fall under the debuff umbrella and, more often than not, rely on effect hit rate. Now, the base chance for characters to apply these debuffs varies. For instance, Black Swan has a 65% base chance to apply her Arcana, while Kafka boasts an incredible 100% chance to shock with her ultimate. Effect hit rate will boost this chance. Take Silver Wolf, for example. With a 70% chance to trigger her talent, effect hit rate will help you boost that chance all the way up to 100%. While some abilities have a fixed base chance, like Dan Hong's bonus ability, they are far and few between. Most debuffs are affected by effect hit rate. So how do we figure out the right amount of effect hit rate for each character? Well, buckle up because it's time for some math. Effect hit rate acts as a multiplier on top of your base hit chance. Let us take Black Swan's Arcana ability for example. Starting out with a 65% base hit chance, we add the effect hit rate on top of it. But hold on, it is not as straightforward as adding percentages. You can't just add 65% on top of 30 or vice versa and that would equal 90% chance to hit your opponent. That doesn't work. What we have to do is that we have to convert the percentages into decimals. So 65% becomes 0.65, 30% becomes 0.3 and so on. Then we simply add plus one on top of our effect hit rate number. And if you want to see it being used in action, then we basically take 0.65, which is our Arcana base chance, times 1 plus 0.30, right? So 0.30 is our effect hit rate number. And as such, we end up with a 84.5% chance to hit our opponent with our Arcana ability. Ideally, this would be the end of the story. However, enemies in Starway also have a chance to resist debuffs. Check out the list on the screen right now, which is a pre panacone list on PrideRen, or not PrideRen, on, on the wiki, to see their individual effect resistances. Most hover around 30% or less, with rare cases of 100% immunity, like the Flamespawn for example being immune to burning, or Cocolia being immune or more or less immune to being frozen. Kind of ironic, right? But hey, that's Starwell for you. Either way, let us dive deeper into the math behind effect resistance and how it factors into our calculations. The formula resembles our effect hit rate setup with one crucial tweak. Instead of doing one plus our effect hit rate, we now do one minus the effect resistance of our opponent. And if we take Black Swan as an example again, it would basically look like this. 0.65 for our Arcana base hit chance times one minus 0.30, which is the effect resistance of our opponent which will end up being a 45-ish percent chance to hit your Arcana ability. If you're technical at this point, then you could say that the description of your traces for most of the enemies in the game is kinda incorrect because you don't have a 65% chance to hit, but rather than that you only have 45%, which is fairly low considering that you kinda want to land your damage over time effects on every single cast, right? But once again, the traces, the description of them, don't take the enemy effect resistance into consideration, so 0.65 or 65% hit chance is actually correct. From here, some number crunching will lead us to our desired effect hit rate for Black Swan. You can see the formula on the screen right now for her Arcana ability, and the 1.25 is basically a 125% effect hit rate, so we're just gonna assume that we have that much, and if we follow that example, you will end up at a 100% chance to hit your opponent's 
if they have a 30% effect resistance. Now we might be thinking, okay, 125% gives us a guaranteed chance to hit our Arcana ability, then why do all the guides, mine included, tell you to go for 120% effect hit rate on Black Swan? Well, mostly because your passive trace caps out at 120%, and secondly, if you go for 120%, you will more or less land all of your Arcana abilities anyway, so there's no reason to go for more than that. Occasionally you will also encounter enemies that have a higher effect resistance, like those pesky swarm enemies for example, but they are such outliers that we don't really take them into consideration. Before we continue, I want to mention that there is debuff resistance. It is not universal like effect resistance, but rather than that it works on very specific elements. I mentioned that earlier, Cocolia for example is immune to freeze, flame spawns are immune to burning and so on. They basically have a 100% resistance, but I will not annoy you with the calculations for this one, it kinda works the same as effect resistance when it comes to that. Also considering that this is a fairly nerdy video, there are enemies who quote unquote only have a 75% debuff resistance, Swarok and Shepard for example have a 75% chance to resist freeze, so you can technically outscale that if you get enough effect hit rate. Now if you're thinking Vakosi, I'm not a big fan of math, then don't worry me neither. Let us take a look at Pride Wind for some actual numbers when it comes to our characters. Alright, so here we are at Pride Wind, and for those that don't know Pride Wind, it is a really good site when it comes to seeing what stats, relics, light cones and team compositions your characters should be going for. I will leave a link to it down in the description box for you guys to check out, but for now let us take a look at characters that will need effect hit rate. Characters that come to mind here are Black Swan, Kafka, Sampo, Gui Knifen for example, as well as Pila, Silver Wolf and March 7th. Some of them do damage over time and others will simply apply debuffs to your opponent, but like we said earlier, all of them will need effect hit rate. Black Swan, if you remember what I said earlier, she needs a 120% effect hit rate, so let us see what Pridewind is going to say. Pridewind says that you should be going for 100% to 120% later on, right? So 100% earlier on when you're starting building Black Swan and 120% once you basically are done building her, as simple as that. After that we have Kafka, who doesn't really need that much effect hit rate, unironically, she only wants to have 29%. That is because most of her abilities have a very high base hit chance. You will need more effect hit rate if you have Eidolon 1, because that one has a lower base hit chance than her abilities, but usually even if you have Eidolon 1, you're Gucci if you have 29%, because otherwise you would sacrifice too much attack. After that we have Sampo, and he will need 67 to 80% effect hit rate. 67 in order to always hit with your ultimate, and 80% if you always want to hit with your Windshear application. Green Knifen is kinda the same. She wants to have 67% um, effect hit rate in order to always apply her burning and I think her fire kiss also has a base hit chance, so you also want to apply that as well, right? After that we have three characters who want to have effect hit rate, but they don't do damage over time. The first one is Pila. Pila has a, a freeze, right? And in order to always you know, freeze your opponents, or not just the freeze, but the other abilities as well, right? You want to have 67% effect hit rate, including her bonus ability. Her bonus ability, for those that don't know Pila, basically gives your entire team 10% effect hit rate. So Pila is a really good character for damage over time teams. Unfortunately, you don't see her that often right now due to Rune Mei, and we all know Rune Mei, she's broken. So yeah, Pila is a little bit benched, I guess you could say, but hopefully we will see her in the future again. After that we have Silver Wolf, and Silver Wolf she wants to have 68 to 96% effect hit rate. The reasoning why there's such a big difference, once again, is A, due to the traces themselves, right? Different base hit chances, so you need different effect hit rate depending on the ability, as well as your opponents, right? The more or the higher they are when it comes to how dangerous they are, the more effect resistance they have, right? And the more effect resistance they have, the more effect hit rate you need, as simple as that. And after that, we have March 7th, who is a character that can be built in two different ways. You can go full death, as simple as that, and you're done. 
or you can go for effect hit rate if you want to freeze your opponents by using her ultimate. If you decide to do so, once again you go for 65 to 92% effect hit rate. The reasoning, once again, effect resistance of your opponents, as simple as that. And that is it when it comes to effect hit rate on your characters. Obviously I left out characters like Luca for example, but if you are interested in him you can check it out by yourselves. And with that we are more or less done with the guide. If you are interested in why I decided to recreate this guide, then the answer to that is very simple. Over the past few days I was approached by multiple people asking me why characters like Black Swan for example need so much effect hit rate. Or why does Green Knife need effect hit rate? Why do characters like Pila and Silverwolf who don't even do damage over time need effect hit rate as well? And generally speaking I would say there's a lot of misconception in the community when it comes to effect hit rate. Or at least people don't fully realize how it works. And for those people I basically created this guide. If you are somewhat familiar with the game, right, if you follow other YouTube channels like Savvy or I Win To Lose then you probably already know how it works. But if you are new to the game or if you have never really used damage over time teams then here you go, as simple as that. If you found any mistakes, maybe I did some, then let me know in the comments. Other than that leave a like or a sub and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.